<laughs> Ladies oh and gentlemen, God. from Sweet Run, my friend and yours, Larry Wayne. How's it going, buddy? What's up? <laughs> What's up, man? A little, um, little bit early this morning. Sorry to drag you in oh, here so man. early. It's all good. Uh, I usually get up early anyways. I mean, you know. How, how early are you getting up? Are you like that uh, Mark Wahlberg? He gets up like 4 o'clock in the morning. I'll like get that. up. No. Three? I'm, I'm not that guy. Uh, you yeah. know, seven ish, six, whatever. And then I get woke up because I usually get up early and do my thing and whatever. And then I'll start working on music for the biggest part of the day. If I'm not going to a show or whatever, I'm working on music at treated as a regular job, you know. Do you, do you work on music earlier in the morning or like later? What I in normally the day? do is I work on it like an hour or two, take a break, get food, whatever, mm-hmm. go back and work on it an hour or two, take a break, go back. Because your hands get tired and stuff. So I just kind of do it in segments, a couple of hours at a time, until three or four. Yeah. Unless I have nothing else to do, then I'll just just keep going. Yeah, I've always like found a lot of inspiration in the morning times for some reason. I don't know what it is because about you're not that. stressed out from the day. Maybe and like uh, well, I've watched videos about it too because apparently other people it's the same thing that they get inspired really early in the morning. Oftentimes it's like. As soon as you wake up, like some stuff just mm-hmm. comes to you. Maybe it's something to do with the dream realm. I don't know, man. The I've, world's trippy. I've had to get up in the middle of the night and like just could not sleep. And I would get up and go downstairs, grab a guitar quietly, yeah. and sit there and hold it to my ear, just like trying to work on something because I had it in my head while I was sleeping. And I was like, I got to go do this now yeah. because if I wait till the morning, I'll forget. So a lot of times I'll flip my phone open, hit record on video, and just lay it in my lap and just play what I was playing and then go back to bed. See, I'll do that too. And and sometimes you catch gold. You know, you're like, thank God I recorded that. But oftentimes, for me at least, I, I listen back to it. I'm like, man, what was I thinking? You know, like, you, <laughs> it, of course, it's 2.30 in the morning. I was thinking something crazy. Yeah. But I, I, some every once in a while, man, like, I'll, I'll catch that good idea, you know. But I, oftentimes, it's not the case for me. I've got one on here right now. I saved it just because, and I was like, and I went back and listened to it, I went, ugh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't like that so much. That didn't sound, it doesn't sound as good as it did when I was thinking about it so i'm like yeah i'm just gonna keep it for for uh, i guess inspiration yeah but to be like don't write that something like that again it's awful and maybe like there's like a good idea in that bad idea you know like uh in maybe like there's a you write a bad song but there's a good lyric that becomes an even better song than the one you wrote before i don't know oh, yeah. i'm a musician see, I, go, don't know. I go backwards i'll write like little riffs or little ideals of song like music melodies mm-hmm. and then if i like the melody I'll, I'll listen to the music because that the melody is what moves you, like if they're like people dance or whatever. That's what moves, not the words. That that moves you here. Physically, yeah. the music moves you. So I I go with the music first, and I go. Well, if I like that, if I really like it, then I'll start adding words to it and build it around that way, mm-hmm. because it's got to move. I want it to move them physically, and emotionally. So I get what if it saying. doesn't move them physically then I won't write the emotional part with it because it's a waste of time for me. Mm. I get what you're saying. Whenever like we started this off and you were talking about waking up early and I was talking about Mark Wahlberg, apparently he wakes up at 2.30 a.m. Jesus. What time does he go to bed? Like six in the evening? Apparently he has like a little time schedule here. Like you, you remember how? Uh, <laughs> you, do you know who Hunter S. Thompson is? Yes. Have you ever seen this his schedule? No, I actually have not. Well, if you get a chance to look it up, like okay. man, it it just like somebody from I think Rolling Stone or some magazine stayed with him and like wrote his schedule throughout the day, like what he done. The man was lucky to was li- to oh live as God. long as he did. But here's a uh, Mark Wahlberg's two thirty wake up two forty five a.m. Prayer time. What are you doing in that 15 minutes? It's sketchy, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, 3.15, breakfast. 3.40, workout. 5.30 a.m., post-workout meal. 6 a.m., shower. 7.30 a.m., golf. 8 a.m., snack. 9.30 a.m., cryo chamber recovery. What is that? It's a cryo chamber. Cry- I'd probably, like, I guess where he's working out, he's probably using, like, cold therapy. That's probably what that is. You know, on his. Uh, cryo. It's cool word. It's a, 
I'm not smart enough to know what that it's word is. It's basically a fancy word probably for like ice bath. <laughs> we'll look it up here in a minute. <laughs> 10 30 a.m. Snack. 11 a.m. Family time. Meetings. Work calls. Aw. 1 p.m. Lunch. 2 p.m. Meetings. Work calls. But there was only one family time. Oh. 3 p.m. Pick up the kids. Oh, cool. D- ain't this dude like making movies? Where's this time? Where's that time? 3.30 p.m. snack, 4 p.m. workout, number 2, 5 p.m. shower, 5.30 p.m. dinner, family time, 7.30 p.m. bedtime. He goes to bed at 7.30. Jesus. But where's the movies? Well, I would, just, that's probably a, like a, uh, a generalized schedule when he's not recording and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like me, you know, bef- b- while the COVID was going crazy, wild and i couldn't really i played some and stayed fairly busy but for the most part uh i would work on music in the evenings Mm -hmm. from early in the morning all day in the gym wow that's what i did five days a week i need to be like that but you know and now the music picked back up and it's got extremely busy for me so i was had to cut back on the gym stuff. Well, what's uh, uh also by the way, the uh, cryo chamber is the a cold chamber. Why don't you just call it a cold chamber? Why do you why do, why do they have to call it a cryo chamber? Because it Who sounds cares? exotic, it's fancy, it's Ooh. fancy. But fancy. I, but see, like I, I started hobbies during the whole quarantine experience, and now that everything's opened back up and stuff is back going, I got a lot of irons in the fire, and that was mm. and, and I and I wonder like how many people is kind of having that problem that they picked up certain hobbies that might be doing good for him right now but now everything else is picking back up that like little side gigs that they had and uh yes quite a busy time right now you know i think the last time i was here i complained about not getting to play as much i mean not really complained but you know yeah Reminisce. i didn't really pick up no hobbies but i'll tell you what it did do it absolutely gave me a lot of time to hone my craft and write new music that I did I didn't have time before because I was continuously playing going 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 you know before it hit I was four or five nights a week playing somewhere with somebody yeah so this just absolutely gave me all kinds of time to write which I was sitting around and I hadn't even thought about it and it was a couple of weeks ago I went this is awesome I've got some really good songs that I didn't have because I didn't make time to write Sometimes when you play music, you get uh, sidetracked with do this show, do this gig, keep going, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And you forget that, well, you got to write music, guy, or yeah. you're just going to be in a cover band forever. Yeah. Well, see, so, like, like I, I, I give myself a few months off to write some material, and then I'll hit the road. Because I can't do both, man. That's It's too difficult for me. I got that kind of time well i found out how to do it like i said early every morning get up work on music and then like you know i got shows coming up and on the days that i have shows or whatever i don't i don't touch anything until i get yeah. to the place and then i'll start working because uh well i'll take that back usually early every morning i'll get up if i have a show say today i'll get up early in the morning i'll play for about 45 minutes to an hour get my hands loosened up and then i don't touch it the rest of the day hmm. and so um but, yeah, I had to find a way to balance it because I couldn't take two or three months off. I would go insane not playing. That is my thing. That is my every, that is my entire life is music. That's what, other, you know, I have my People, family, obviously, but my music is it. It's an addiction. People do not get it. I mean, like. I can't quit. It, it, it's like. I can. I've heard stories about people abusing certain substances, and they say, like, they're always chasing that first high. For for me as a comedian, at least whenever like the first time that I had a show that went really good and there was a lot of laughs and you're just on top of the world. And the same thing for a musician or just anybody in entertainment. Whenever you have that one moment when you're like, man, that was insane. You're right. always chasing that, and it's it's not going to happen all the time, and it's not going to happen even often, really. But you're just always chasing that one moment, and it becomes an addiction. It really does. It so does. for last year, man, the artists and just entertainers in general that didn't get to get on the road or do anything, yeah, it was it, – it, we went a little bit crazy. 
Oh, That's yeah. why I picked up it, so many hobbies to try to like <laughs> keep my mind away from all that. It it's drives a, you wild. It it is, and for me, the music is. I don't know that I'm chasing like um, that first time, or, or like you were talking about. Me is, I want to be better. I want to be better every day that I was the day before. Mm-hmm. Every day, it's my goal to play better, sing better, learn something new mm-hmm. every day. Because if I'm not moving forward, then I might as well be going backwards. That's good. That's my. That's, that should be a T-shirt. That is my my thing. I was my grandpa said. He was a great musician. Oh, my God, I wish I could play like he could. And he told me, he said, you're lucky if you learn something every day. Mm. He said, you need to try to learn something every day. He said, no matter what you're doing, try to learn something about it every day. He said, because if you do the same thing for 50 years, you're still not going to know everything about it. He said, but if you want to be proficient in what you're doing, try to learn every day. Don't ever feel that Mm. you're... You're at a level where you don't need to learn. Yeah. I, I want to learn every day. That's why I sat one day for seven hours nonstop playing this guitar. And that broke me from doing that. That's the reason I do it in intervals now, because yeah. for three days I couldn't move this wrist. Well, well you can also burn yourself out, too. I, I see a lot of people, that's what happens with them. And, and I've done it on certain things, too. You have to give yourself a break every once in a while. But that's great advice to go by, too, is to learn something new every day because you don't have to focus on just one thing. You can have a little bit of ADHD and jump from back and forth. See, like all the hobbies that I picked up during quarantine, no, it was stuff that I never thought of that I could even do or even thought of doing in the first place. And now I love it. You know, it's, it's good to get outside of your comfort zone and learn a little bit. I mean, heck, you only live once. Get Man, out there and explore. I'll sit and... You know, I know that <clears throat> everyone assumes that I'm strictly a country music singer because, you know, the way I look. I mean, this is the way I was raised. Yeah, and I sing country music, but I'll sit down and learn White Stripes stuff. I'll right. sit down and learn Pantera stuff. And just be, be I can take well, any style of music, some little lick or some little phrase, mm-hmm. and apply that for something that I'm doing. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, music is all the same, no matter how. Some of it's just got a lot of distortion. Some has yeah. effects. Some has modulation. Some the, well, It's all the same. There's only so many notes. Well, I think that music stereotypes are starting to, it's, like, they're, they're not they're not going to be a thing for much longer, especially nowadays, like, with pop music. I mean, mm-hmm. people, well, you hear of everything. Like, there's this EDM DJ that I was really into. He's doing country music now. Diplo, he messes around with country music. And you have Miley Cyrus, who came out with a rock album and had Joan Jett and all these iconic female rock and roll singers on it. So, I mean, like, people are, it's starting to be like where it's just music. It ain't rock, it ain't pop, it ain't hip-hop or rap or jazz. It's just music. And, man, I I love that it's that way because whenever I was growing up, that's what I liked about it. I was just listening to the radio and I was hearing different songs that I liked. I didn't care that it was rock or postmodern country or whatever. I didn't. I wasn't so technical. And it was, it was ignorant, and ignorance is a bliss. But to me, it was just music, and it sounded good. And I think that it's getting back to that now, and it's 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 a good thing because especially like with you, man. Like people would say, like you look country, but if you were to go to a place like. LA right now mm-hmm. you could fit any style of music oh yeah yeah that's why I go to my shows I mean because I it never fails I can go into some of these bigger venues and uh I know they're not so much into the country by doing research before I get there I always research every place so I know how to play my show accordingly well you always have somebody come kind of snotty and they'll be like well, what kind of music do you play you play just country and I'm like no I played everything from George Strait to Prince, and they go, what? <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh. Okay. Hey, you, you still have those people that were raised in just one certain genre. To, I'd say that's the problem with with musicians, too, that y'all find is, like, you'll have these people that come out to shows. It's not exactly like a music fan. They're just a certain kind of music fan. Like, they're into just rock or just oh, country. Yeah. 
and they weren't expecting to see you there tonight. That, that's the reason I write the way I'm writing, and I've said it. I was telling somebody the other day they were asking me about my music, and I said, I got one foot over here in country and one in rock and roll. It's kind of like, I, same thing, I got to say it every time. Some Kind of like George Strait and Leonard Skinner had a baby. Yeah. You know, because I want to be able to write something for rock and roll and country is your, for the most part, your two biggest markets. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to write something for both sides of the fence. You know, and if I can bring those two groups of people together with one song, yeah. that's awesome, you know, to me. I don't want to write just for these people. I, I want to write for everybody. Well, well, see, that's why I was thinking, like, well, talking about the Miley Cyrus rock album earlier, for example. I think that's – people, of course, will make jokes about it, and I've made plenty of jokes about it. It's hilarious. But 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 it's also, like, it's it's a good thing that, you know, she might be turning on some white – 13 year old to Joan Jett, you know, or I think, I think she had Blondie on there too. She had a few people. So, I mean, whenever you have artists doing that, it's funny at first, but you never know how that's going to influence their fan base into liking other styles of music. Cause man, I used to hate bluegrass whenever I was growing up. I'm like, it sounds like, <laughs> I, I didn't know whenever I was younger, I still, I, I still like, like it, but, 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 but now, <laughs> now I love Love it, man. It's to me, it's beautiful music, and that's all I've been listening to here lately. To it be makes honest. me nervous. I, I can't. I well, can't. Well, I, I appreciate my family's it so much all more. into that, you know. And oh, you don't like bluegrass? Mm -mm. Really? Why? No, I just. Uh, it just for one, it makes me nervous. How, like what do you just mean? nervous. It just <laughs> well, like, it, it's just, it's so fast paced. Like like, like there's most a lot part, of energy, and I really don't like. The fact that predominantly, not all, predominantly bluegrass doesn't have a drum kit. Yeah, I like a full band. I like, I like that backbeat, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying, but and 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 and, and, I, and that's I, the reason. I, I get it. But but it's it's really cool though that these people are such world class musicians that they don't even need something like that. Too like see, I know. see see now that like I know more about music and I'm a little bit more educated about stuff, it ain't well, I'm still a fan of bluegrass, but it's really because I appreciate it so much more now. Oh, they're I, great. I, I can see the they're great musicians. Oh my God. Yeah. Like you have to be a good musician. There's a thing in bluegrass. bluegrass called the bluegrass ching. Hmm. I, I, I had to that. learn it. When you're playing like a guitar if you listen to bluegrass, you can hear a ching. They got a different strum pattern the way they play. Yeah. And an old, really old guy, bluegrasser that I know, I ain't going to mention his name because he's, he played with Monroe and stuff, so I better not. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we won't he talk told about me days. that it was called the bluegrass ching. And he hmm. sat and showed me that. And I, and I was playing a lot of gospel in church, and I had to learn that. And let me tell you, that's one of the hardest things I ever had to learn was that weird strum. They got Blue a Grace weird Chim. strum and pattern. It's so weird. I might it, be spelling it wrong. It's it's just awful. I just it took me a long time to learn it, and I felt accomplished when I did learn it. And I was like, "What am I going to do with it now?" Yeah. I'm like, I, I mean, I can do it, but I probably couldn't do it now. But I was like, well, "There's nothing I can do with it. It's great. It's kind of like I would equate that to the uh, the upstroke that how Stevie Ray Vaughan plays because uh -huh. he played in a circle." And then he'd always catch his strings on the way, the bottom strings on the way up. That's how he got that. If you listen to Stevie Ray style, it's like a chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk. Dun, dun. You know, and he was just a strum. And that's yeah. basically similar to what the bluegrass cats do, man. And it's, yeah. you know, I just don't like, I like a full kit, man. I like that full bodied sound. Yeah. And I'm getting ready to <clears throat> make all kinds of people mad. But we've got one and we've used it, but I can't stand, I cannot stand. The sound of a cajon. It's a cajon. Sitting beating on the box. Oh, that's what it, that's, I, that's what it's called? A, yeah. a cajon? I, I mean, it, I it's fabulous I, I for what it what is. It's fabulous for what it does and all that. But well, me, it, I want that full kit. I can't. Okay, to, it, to, to, it, be, to, to be honest, like it's just, I, I, I've, I've never been a big fan either. To me, that's just white hippie stuff. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess it's cool if you can't get the whole drum kit. But I would. It's much, great for small would, space. 
my entire life, every band I've ever played in and every music that I've ever listened to that I dug had a full kit. And I think it's, I think it's just like a mental thing or in my ear, it doesn't sound, I've played music so long that it, it sounds off. Does that make sense? Yeah. Something's off because you can hear like a thump and a pop and that's it. You don't yeah. hear any cymbals. You don't hear no steady like, you know, hi hat. I'm like, it's just off. I'd say some people can pull it off. Maybe Dave Matthews Band, a band like that. Yeah, they're kind of a, gra- a Grateful Dead cover band. They can probably pull it off. Oh man, My, Chris, hey Chris Bentley, he does a great job. Well, at it. that's what I'm Big saying. It's Chris. great for s- things, different certain, things, but certain like certain for, sounds. If I go play with somebody that's got them, I'm. Fine, but for like me, I took my band and they wanted. There's a couple places that wants us to use a cajon, and I'm and I'm just like, Ugh. and my drummer, he equally hates it as bad. <laughs> I'd say drummers do hate. He cajons. went and bought him a big fancy one, <laughs> a big pearl one made by Pearl. You can unscrew the front plate yeah. that you beat, and you can change the plate on the thing and get different tones. And because he got the big fancy one, and he he was like, he's still like, I hate it. And I'm like, yeah, I do too. It's awful. Yeah, I mean it's. Well, I mean you're just so used to that sound over the years, man, you mm-hmm. know. And it, it, it sucks that places are asking you to play with it too. Well, what is it? Just because it's a small space or something that, like that? The one place in particular because it's small, I can understand completely. And so what I do is I stick a microphone in the back of it, tape it on, and run it through the PA and crank it. See, b- to back, get that round, fat bottom end, you know, so it yeah. sounds decent, you know. Yeah. I mean. But like, see, but like, I'll watch videos from back in the day, man. You'll have these little dive bars that just the whole band just packed into a little corner, you know. I played and, in some tiny spots. But I, but still, though, you, anything for that sound, you know. I, if I was a venue, I would want that. In all honesty, because that just that's what sounds good, you know. <sighs> People want that; they want that bass. They want to feel that bass kick in their heart. I had that discussion with my drummer and my bass player the other day. I explained to him. I said, "You guys are the heart of this band." I said, "No matter what I'm singing or what I'm playing," I said, "That doesn't matter." Yeah. If I you said, "If that well, bass and that kick ain't pumping," yeah. And I said, "There's no music." I said, "You're the backbone." Wasn't there like an old saying that goes like? Uh, a good band isn't nothing without a good drummer or something like that. Something Case like that. in point, the greatest rock and roll drummer of all time has been voted. I couldn't tell you the times he's been voted at. Phil Rudd. Yeah, that's what everybody says. Yeah, Phil Rudd. And, and ACDC. And, Phil Rudd and Cliff Williams was the best rhythm, uh, best backbone rhythm section of all time. It was like a clock. Uh, who was the one guy in Rush? I'm so brain dead. This, yeah, no, yeah. I, I was. I'm he's so great, but morning. he was so fancy. But what I like about Phil Rudd, it's like a clock, man. It never deviates. He's yeah. dead money all the time, and it's solid. But but also, if you're playing the same drum beat for however long ACDC has been around, yeah, like, I said, you're only getting pretty good at it. I said, you can buy good. every album they ever had and stuck it in, <laughs> and as soon as you pop <laughs> it in, it's pretty much, <laughs> hey, that's ACDC. <laughs> yeah. You know is, right away, which I, it's cool that they have that sound, but yeah, man, I, I've noticed that a time or two, that... Every song sounds the it's, same, it's but their, it's it's great it's though. Their it's their formula, great. and that's what works, you know. Yeah, and it if still you look sounds at, good. Well, like your shirt, the AFD. Yeah. If you go listen to that album, Steve Adler playing drums, pretty much the same way. Yeah. Dead Money, solid, and pretty close to the same beat because it worked. Exactly, and if it works, it works. And there's See, nobody, not, there's nobody else can, ever can tell me that like Use Your Illusion or any of them other albums was better than AFD when nah. they swapped drummers. The sound changed. It did, and I still like Use Your Illusion, but this, is, this, this is always going to be my favorite. And it's not just because of Welcome to the Jungle and all that. In all honesty, I just think even the B-Sides, man, it's just a better album. You know what my favorite song, well, two favorite songs is, is uh, Paradise City and Rocket Queen. I love Rocket Queen. Everybody, Most everybody hates you, Rocket you ever, Queen. Uh, you ever heard that Used to Love Her? By Guns N' Roses? On the lies. <laughs> yeah. I actually covered that a couple times. <laughs> She's buried right here in my backyard. Such a great song, man. Whenever I was a kid, some radio station somewhere on a road trip played that, and I was just like, I was, I started paying attention to the lyrics. I'm like, what is he saying? <laughs> and yeah, man, shout out to that radio station, whoever they were, for having the cojones to play that song. See, I, it's pretty, I grew pretty up dark. In, uh, I grew up in Southport. Well, Half here and half down North Carolina, and uh, 
the radio stations down there were, uh, I'll put it in perspective. When I came back here, there was new stuff being played on the radio. Mm -hmm. And people were like, oh, man, you hear this new song? I'm like, that's been out for 10 years. Yeah. Well, well, you know, we was so, they was playing stuff down there, and I was like, what's this? Yeah, you know? You just have to have somebody that really knows their music. And, and and that's why like our, our stations do good because I keep up with everything. It's just you. It's 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 a task, man. You got like if you don't have somebody that's like on top of that because music is changing so much nowadays. Man, ain't it? You, you can't just go by the top forty anymore because sometimes that might even might not even be what's popular. Uh, Billboard. I don't even think they do a top forty anymore. I don't think that's a thing. They do like a hot one hundred because that's there's so much well, music to pick it's from. It's like it's like labels. They're struggling right they're, now. They're heading out the door. Yep. Because you don't need a label anymore. No. And there, there's if so many can, artists that If you can that. record your music and put out a good product, I mean, you have Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, even on TikTok, little snippets of it. You can spend tiny bits of money. Like I can upload a song to Facebook to, our, to my page and spend a bunch, a little bit of money to promote it. It'll reach a half a million people. And if I want to put a little bit more in it, then I'll reach a million people. And then, then, then people will just start wanting to buy your stuff. You don't even no. need you don't need a label. I mean, exactly. You, it it could be a help, but also you really don't need it. No, and, and also it could be a lot. I think that it's it'll screw you a lot more I than had it'll a, help you. I had a lady ask me the other day wanting to sign me to an artist development contract. I said, uh, no. No. I, I mean, said unless it has a one and nine zeros behind it. No. Well, and, and also, man, I mean, it. the more money they pay you, the more they're going to screw you in the end. Because all them horror stories that everybody hears about labels, it's all true. You know, that they are in it to make money. And nowadays, you don't need them for anything. Like, even when it comes to distribution, you don't it, – it's the Internet, you know. And, and also, I mean, radio is a lot more – it's easier to get on radios now. And, I mean, it's just – the le the playing field is so open, and the record labels understand that, and they realize that they hold no power anymore. Yeah, I mean, I had this the same conversation with somebody else the other day about you know music promotion and distribution. They were like, "Well, you got to make CDs." I said, "Why? Why do I need to make CDs? Nobody buys CDs anymore. No. Cars don't even come with CD players right. anymore. I mean, my dad got a new truck, and yeah, didn't even have one. We're like, what in the world is going know, on there? There's no. To me, if I was going to make anything, you know what I'd make? Vinyl. Yeah, a hey, vinyl made a big comeback. Yes, uh, it last is. year, year before last, it's like still, it out, it outsold like uh, I think it was CDs. It's actually like uh, a really hot item right now. Vinyl is. And, you know, I mean, if I was going to make anything like hard copy, it'd be vinyl. Yeah. Well, Just because it sounds it, better. It sounds better. And also, it's an experience. See, that's what I like about vinyl. Uh, there's this one guy that I like, um, Wiz Khalifa. He came out with an uh, anniversary of an album that had to do with orange juice. I'm not going to say the full name of it because yeah. I can't. You but, better uh, not. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, whenever you open up the vinyl of it, it's... It's like you're opening up one of those like old school orange juice cartons. Oh, that that's has, cool. Like, that like flips up and yeah. stuff. You know, it's just like that. And like the way that the songs are labeled out, it looks like the nutrition facts. You know, and stuff. Yeah. And like you uh, take out the uh, vinyl, and it has some stuff on it. Never mind, I can't. But, well, one vinyl <laughs> has like one vinyl has the back of a uh, orange, and then you flip it over, and it's the other orange. I can't say what's on the other vinyl record, but it's 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 an experience because you're not just holding a little disc that has some writing on it. Right. I mean, it's like you're opening up a book. It's that's when albums actually meant something. You weren't just chasing those two or three hit singles, and then the other nine songs were whatever because you didn't care back then. It had to be from the beginning to the end, good, oh, because yeah. you had to keep them locked in. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I couldn't tell you the the, the CDs or whatever I bought for one song, and uh, that's not the case nowadays. Yeah, they're not. People's not going to go buy a bunch of stuff for one song when they can go online and get it. So no. you know, I I I don't see the need. No, you don't. I mean, I don't see the need, and it's uh, it's kind of used to like I'm getting ready to record my finally, whew, 
I was getting ready to hit it before the virus happened, but now I remember you talking about it. Gosh, I finally get to go to the studio, and I'm not going to make any seats. Well, I may eventually make some for like some of my family, the old farts that (laughs) want to pop it in their truck or whatever, you know? Yeah. Because they don't know how to use this or a computer, so yeah, I've had to help out my folks quite quite a bit here lately. We're going to do that. We're going to be. Uh, he's actually supposed to call me today and let me know the date that he wants me to come. So, nice man. <clears throat> well, I, I think that it's still because I still listen to CDs every once in a while. I just went to Fye a few weeks ago and picked some up. But I, I'm weird like that because man, I still have eight tracks. Like I, I collect music memorabilia. Holy I got cassettes. Crap. I got dude. I, I haven't got, seen an eight track in. I've got them, and I've, I've, got, I've got some good ones too. And it all and it all works. I, but uh, I, if you ain't got weirdos like me, most ninety nine percent of the population is not weirdos like me and collects all this old <laughs> music stuff. A lot of times, man, it's it's still radio. A lot of people still listen to radio. Uh, streaming is a very big part of it right now. But yes, yeah, CDs. Even have you seen the CD section in Walmart? here recently yeah it's next to nothing yeah it's it's like three little shelves that's probably five feet wide or something like that you know it's yeah, there ain't much. it's nothing i remember i remember the day uh it was up here when kmart was still in here like i walked in the day that they were taking all the cds out and it broke my heart because like even cds was still a little like that experience feeling that i was talking about with vinyl you got that with cds too because sometimes like you open up the booklet yeah. and sometimes like it was like made to be as like a poster oh, yeah, or something like that. Those. It was so cool. I, I kind of think like the the I mean we're by no means old at all. But the younger generation younger than us, we were the last generation that got to go to record stores, man. Think about that. Yeah. It it yeah. was something cool to go into a record store and you'd 20 or 30 people in there, music always playing and any kind of music you wanted and you could go through there and Get the latest rec- CD, yeah, record, man. tape, whatever, and and the kids, the the younger generation, miss got is missed out on that altogether. That was an experience all to itself, just going into the record store. Well, well I mean, because you never knew what was going to happen. See, whenever I was in college, I lived uh, close to one, and I would just always ride up there. And man, the people that you met in there, they would suggest music that you never heard before. Right. Uh, you would oftentimes hear about like just like see an album cover and sometimes that just stands out to you and like what is this and you buy it just to check it out there's been so many bands that i've learned about solely from a record store if record stores didn't exist i wouldn't have knew about it and nowadays i guess you have youtube and spotify for that but it's not the same there's something about that in-person connection right it's, that is you can't replace that it's a uh... Like I said, it's an experience. I mean, you can learn, you can talk about the groups you like, and they'll tell you about what they like, and then next thing you know, you're walking out with what they told you about, and they're walking yeah. out what you. And, and, and next time you see them, are like, man, that was great. Thanks for suggesting that. Yeah. And you know, uh, I've met over the years. You would not believe several band members that I've played with in music in a music store, in a record store. Yeah. You get to go in there and you get talking. I play music. Oh, I do too. Well. You know, let's jam out a little and, bit. Or you know, whatever. I've had some really good times of doing that. You know, well, some not so good, and it didn't turn out so good. Some was great. Yeah, but that, and but you took what you can get. See, that's why I've never been like big on sh- online shopping. I I, dude, I rarely order I don't trust anything. It. I don't either. I, I'm, <laughs> dude. My my wife, she of course trusts it to with all of her heart. She is very quick like to spend when you some drop a hundred bucks and it's like well, it'll be here in three days, and you're sitting there for the three days going. Like, are you sure? It, it better come. I gave him a hundred bucks. I'm gonna be the, the, mad. My, my, my bank, the bank here on my phone says that you've already right. took my hundred bucks, I and I still ain't got my stuff. I can't stand it. I don't like it either, it, man. It, it makes but, me nervous, Rick. But so many people are so quick to jump on it, and I think that especially with the younger generation, it's convenience. Well, it's it's convenience, and it's all it's laziness too. But the kids nowadays that are growing up in this society, in this new society, the human interaction. Is not having that. I don't know right. what type of effect that's going to have, have people on skills. No, I, well, but you're going to have an entire world that doesn't have good people skills. I'm already seeing that with younger people in my family, and to me, I'm like, you know, what's the solution for that? Here, here in about 20 years, 
those are the people that are going to be running stuff. And if they're living, well, growing up in this day and age where you don't have to meet somebody to get toilet paper, you can just order it off of Amazon or whatever. What's that world going to be like? You know, right. and because I mean, I know we have social media, but to me, that's not social at all. You're sitting there <laughs> commenting, right. you know, I call but, put, put keyboard in, warriors. Yeah, they're keyboard warriors and they're putting in capital letters whenever they're yelling at each other. <laughs> it's stupid. But but it's also, you know, well, I'm I'm seriously nervous about that, because what is going to happen I've, in the next 10, 20 I've years? I've been around the, that younger generation quite a bit and. um you know, I'm pretty. I'm pretty loud. I'm a singer. Yeah. And you know, I'm pretty loud, and I and I look pissed off all the time, <laughs> yeah. according to what everybody says, because you know, just the way I am, and I walk up into them, talk to them. They have no. They can't communicate. They don't. They'll, they don't know how to keep the conversation head. going. They'll kind of drop their head. They they can't. I don't know. They don't have this this. And you're going to have a whole world of that. I find so, it, I, I love it though because when I. When I walk up on one of them like that, like some of my little girls' friends, mm-hmm. when they have no communication skills and they're all timid and they're just like, you know, I don't know what to do, that makes me, I, I'm just so happy because then I can torment them. Yeah, yeah. I love it. You know, I like to torment them and just pick at them. Well, I think that, uh, excuse me, makes them tough. <clears throat> it does make them tough. And, and I think that stuff like that is important. And we need to, somebody needs to step in and do something. I mean, and it's the parents, really. I mean, it really falls on the responsibility of the parents. When I'm, my kids are going to get out and live a little bit, you know, they're not going to have no iPhone whenever they're seven years old. There's, no. yeah, there's some kids nowadays no, that, not. like, I, I see like three year olds holding an iPad because mommy and daddy doesn't want to put up with them, you know. Actually, get your kid out there. I, I'm glad they that I'd be out in the yard at yeah. three years old eating dirt. Yeah, man, that's what I was about to say. I, 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 Bill's I, immune system. I grew up making mud, pot, mud pies, you know, and I tried to eat one when I was younger. That's probably why I'm – see, I – This uh, thing right here will educate your children if you do not. Yeah, and and also they're, they're educating themselves, and sometimes that is – well, oftentimes, especially when you're young, that is not a good thing. You don't no. need to raise yourself. You're no. stupid when you're young. Yes. You're not going to make good decisions. You need somebody I'm that... I'm still not very smart. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm still I, very I, stupid. I, I make dumb decisions all the time. So, I mean, can you imagine a little kid having yeah. to do it? And look around. But, it's but, everywhere. But also, I mean, the entire world is on this thing. Like, I have seen people die on here. I've seen childbirth. I've seen everything under the sun. You name it. I can see it on here. Even if I don't want to see it, I can still see it if I want to and I just don't know if a kid needs to grow up that fast no and 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 whenever they are whenever they're open to the internet they grow up like that because it's that reality check hits you way too young it needs to hit you like whenever you're in high school whenever you're like oh real life is about to happen I need to get serious yeah you you don't need to be throw, thrown into the world whenever you're seven Again, years old. We were play with Legos. Under ten years old, we were eating dirt, playing in the creek, yeah. catching crawdads. Yeah, choke you know. on an action figure or yeah. something. You know, try to eat pennies. Right. I mean, like, like do something. You know, <laughs> be be a stupid kid. Try to eat pennies. Yeah. Oh my god. But uh, don't try to eat pennies. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Look. PSA: Do not try to yeah. eat pennies. Yeah. But but still, do be not a try kid. This at home kids. Be a kid and be stupid. I done so much stupid stuff whenever I was growing up, and that's probably why I'm stupid now. But I had fun. Like these kids nowadays that are growing up, it's cool because I can see them. They're so much smarter than we were whenever they were, whenever we were their age, and that's because of technology. Well, so that's interesting to see how that's going to the develop. The Bible says that the generations, as they go along, they will become weaker but wiser. Yeah, and, and, and that's I've what's happening. I've watched that because I know my generation of people is, is, is far more intelligent as far as book-wise and stuff mm-hmm. than our parent, parents were because we learned more in yeah. school. And then, like, our kids are going to be way above us, you know. Yeah. So, but at the same time, they're they're physically, their physical constitution is way weaker. Oh, yeah. I, well, it will be. 
Well, like if you look at pictures of people back in the day and then people now, I mean, we're we're so much smaller, less muscular. You know, uh, our skin is even weaker. Like oh, how yeah. our <clears throat> how our grandparents had all these calluses and rough skin. You know, ours ain't like that. Now we we, we use man. lotion. We have to have lotion for it, our dry skin. It puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> yeah, but but like yeah, people are getting weaker and. That's also an argument for like people like aliens, you know, like how they say like, oh, they're big brain but small, smooth skin. Like, well, like silk smooth skin, and you know, like, maybe that's where we're heading as a species because God. like our, I hope y- you never know, you never know. In fifty thousand years, that that can be us. But it's it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, there's always going to be a yin and a yang. So who knows how technology is going to affect us? But we're in that time. You know, like, this is a time like no other. We're starting to fly around on Mars. They have an actual helicopter thing that yeah, took that. flight on Mars. Like, yeah. we're, we're aliens now. <laughs> how we how, how we say, like, there's stuff flying around on this planet. You know what? If I get we're that doing the same thing up, on another one. If they get that set up pretty soon, I want, I want to go and play the first tune on Mars. I want to go play the first Dude, song. That would be epic. I'll you're going it. to die. Like you're you're going to die up there. Every, like even Elon Musk has said like the people that the people that go to Mars first are likely probably going to die up there. But let's let but, them get it settled you, then I'll go play a tune. But but <laughs> but you would hey man, you you would die, you would die on top. I mean, you well, that's you true, would, you'd you know. be up there. I mean, you that's would true. Dude, you would go down to history books. That's right. Rolling Stone would write an article about you. Oh, I wonder if they'd pay big money for that. That'd be pretty cool, man. The first gig on Mars. I'm all about That'd it. That'd be heavy, man. I'm all about it. What was that? What was that? Uh, There's this one dude that played What's the movie a, with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger when he went to Mars? What's it called? Total Recall. Oh, man. I haven't thought about that in Total a while. Total Recall. That's a good movie. Uh, that, see, we could build a little colony. Because they had bars and everything up there. We'd go yeah. play some music and get down. Hey, I'm, and you know that's going to happen. Because, I mean... Even astronauts are people like us. Like you know, Steve Russo. Mm-hmm. It, it seems like every story that he tells about an astronaut, they're meeting in a bar. So, so, so I mean, astronauts—they like to have a good time too. Alcohol and, is a great conduit. Yeah, it, but but it I, will bring people together that normally would not be talking. But but they also need to relax, you know, especially after a big mission like going to Mars. So in no time, in the first ten years, there's going to be some type of bar type of system on Mars. Oh yeah. If there's travel to it, of course. Can you imagine one of them getting tanked, stumbling outside and jumping around like they normally do, and they just float off? <laughs> God, they better be tethered <laughs> down to the ground. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? It's just so weird, man. Like, I'll settle for the moon. I just want I'd, I'd play on the moon. I'm good. The moon would be cool. I, have they done that? I know this one guy was in the International Space Station, I think, and he played a guitar yeah, up I've there. Yeah, I've seen him having his acoustic floating around. Yeah, he had like the mustache, that yeah, really cool mustache. So I, yeah. I wanted to, I'll do the moon <clears throat> and the uh, moon would be dude, dark dude, side of the moon. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You have to do the dark side of the moon on oh, the yeah. moon. That'd be cool, man. But I mean, who who knows what the future is going to be like? It's impossible to think about. I would have never dreamed about podcasting 10 years ago i didn't think that was going to be a thing who knows what's going to happen five years from now man the way technology has progressed in our lifetime um so fast can you imagine like someone that's right now that's 90 100 years old going wow yeah you know you know like especially just just them having one of these in, in, in 1921, what was going on then? World War I was over with yeah. by then, I think. Probably what? around the time of the Depression and stuff. Yeah. It was that in the Roaring Twenties. People 20s. were still, and like in these <laughs> part of the world, people were still using horses yeah. and buggies, yeah. pulling logs with mules and stuff. Yeah, cars didn't become like a normal thing until a little bit into the 1900s. So, yeah, like horses were still a very big thing so around that time. now, like a 100-year-old person now looking around, and I just saw the new Cadillac. It's the new Cadillac Escalade. I saw it last night. If I re- if I read this right, it's like a hundred and some thousand dollars. Is it self driving? There's a it's lot of hands those. free. Yep, there's a lot of those right it now. It has a big thirty eight. It has a full thirty eight inch display in it. Okay. Yep. So and the way I looked at the picture, you can just kick back and relax and watch yeah. TV. And this thing is driving you. I was like, yeah, I'm not buying that. See, see, there's other countries out there that are far more advanced than we are. And uh, I was watching this one thing on 
uh, YouTube a few days ago. I forget which country it is, but they have, like, self-driving cars almost everywhere. Domino's, they use them for delivery. You uh, pick up your delivery out of the back window. The back window rolls down. The car is self-driving. Uh, people use type of Ubers. And, like, these Ubers will have, like, beds in the back. So you can sleep on your way to work or whatever, you know. And, like, people just videotape while they're in the back seat, you know, and the car is just, the steering wheel is moving. But nobody's in there. Yeah, I'm It not is doing so that. crazy. If they have it figured out good enough, maybe. Maybe. Uh, it's going to be a while. It's going to be 10 years. Listen, like, like at, at 10 years after they say they have it figured out. I don't out. like riding with anybody. I don't like nobody driving me. I get an, I'm just, I like to be in control of my vehicle. Yeah. I am not riding something that I am not in control of. I don't know, man. It'd be well, nice to be lazy. Think about it. I've worked around a lot of equipment, a lot of equipment. I work around a lot of equipment right now, power amps, uh, Guitar amps, PA systems, I mean, phones, and it, it, it okay, here's how here, here it is. Everything works until it don't. Yeah. And but, it, it can go just like that, yeah. driving down the freeway 80 miles an hour and hit the sides. You know what? I don't know what to do anymore. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. How about no? If, it, a, if a computer breaks and you're driving down the road and you got your hands on the wheel, or if a tie rod falls off, or if the braking system quits, I can stop that vehicle and navigate it safely mostly. Yeah. But if there ain't nobody driving it, huh. guess what? You're dead. I wonder what type of plan B they have. They have to have some type of plan B. I mean, like, you have to have some type right. of safety feature what, in there. What do they do? What if your ECM quits? That's the total brain of that car. Yeah. And that happens. I've replaced plenty. Yeah. If the ECM shuts the down, break? the whole car says, and yeah. there's nobody driving it. It's just going to go wherever it wants. Exactly. I would rather be hold that wheel. That's I'm. Mm -mm. No. Who knows, man? Elon Musk is getting it figured out. Who knows? Well, that's good for him. That. I'm, I'm, but but there's some people out there, man. And you know, like Elon Musk is just the beginning of what the future may look like. Yeah. Because I mean, like, there's going to be a lot more smart people in the future. I'm still waiting and, on the Jetsons mobile. Hey, and it's going to happen too, man. That that stuff is. But it has so to sound just lively. like the Jetsons car. I don't want it. <laughs> But and they and they do have like hovering cars right now, but they don't hover too far off the ground. Right, and they they have like hovering skateboards. I've seen that. But you know, Elon Musk is the big deal. What people talk about right now. But what I'm thinking about is like the future Elon Musk because he's going to inspire somebody that's going to do even more than him. Oh, so yeah. what's that going to be <clears throat> like? You know, it's well, it's crazy to it's think the about. Same thing with music. They've got up to like. Nine string guitars now. Yeah. It's yeah, seven, eight, nine. I'm like How do you even play something like that? That's just Dude, the fretboard is like that wide. Yeah. I mean like you're overdoing it. At I'm that like, point. you know, because it's the same way with cars, you run out of ideas. You can mm -hmm. only do so much now they're just trying to do more and more and more. And the same thing with the guitar. Well, everybody's done and built everything, so we gotta do something different. It's just overkill. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I think that people just run out of ideas. That was probably some employee at some company that the boss was like, "Ideas, ideas, ideas," and like, "I, I, I don't know, nine string guitar," and they're like, "Okay, do it," and they, that's how they came up with it. They're just so desperate nowadays. Why? Why not? Why? What's the purpose for a guitar with? Ain't there like a twelve string? Ain't there something like yeah, that? Yeah, but the twelve string is. What's that used for? What's the purpose of something like? A 12-string basically just gives it a, the sound of like a doubler. It basically sounds like two guitars at the same time. Okay. Because like you'll have your normal six strings, but you'll have another string per string right beside it. And they're tuned the same as the other. See, like a regular nine-string, each string is tuned differently. Well, on 12-string, your normal tuning, standard tuning for six strings is E, A, D, G, B, E. Well, on 12-string, you got two E's, two A's, two D's, mm. two G's. You know, so it just fattens up the sound. I thought they were just trying to be fancy. No, it gives it a little bit fatter mm. sound and a little, uh, like a doubling effect. Yeah. Well, the people that, like, really understand the craftsmanship of guitars, I've watched a few videos about it, and I'm too dumb to understand it, but they are geniuses. I mean, the, the oh, mathematics yeah. that goes into developing an instrument, you really have to know your stuff. Well, it's like the man that invented the Les Paul. Les Paul himself, you know, his first attempt when he first began to think about it, because back then they were semi-hollow bodies or hollow bodies. Yeah. 
well, when you'd plug them in, they would feed back because of the hollow. So he wanted to develop something that was solid body. You know, his first tent was a piece of railroad steel and part of his mother's telephone, like the old earphone. And he made wow. it, put a string on it. And she's like, well, it sounds good. How are you going to pack that around? <laughs> and so then his next is a log, just a four by four log. He cut out a strip of four by four log and then added the wings to the side, and that was his first solid body. Wow. He, he, he had it in his mind that if he made a solid body guitar that it would take away the feedback. So that's like what you were saying. Those cats, I mean, he they're just smart. Yeah, uh, it, but back then, you know, you really had to be smart. See, back, back, yeah. well, back then the strong survived, and that's why you had amazing people like Les Paul that were just – Nowadays, they seem like aliens to us. Yeah, he but made multi-track recording and everything. Yeah, but back then, I mean, that was like you had to do what you had to do. Those people were desperate to try to be innovative in a time where it was so difficult. I, I think whenever the circumstances are harder, it pushes you harder. Well, and you get people like that. Necessity is the mother of all invention. Mm, that's you, a good. you got to be. I like that. Whatever, you, you, if. If I need something to open this and I don't have anything, you can bet that I will make something to open it. That's the reason, like, the the cavemen, they invented tools. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you know they got hungry. And they're like, yeah. well, how are we going to skin this mammoth? Well, we're not going to chew into it. So they just had to invent tools. That's necessity is what causes you to invent, you know. And uh, yeah. I've done it. I've made tools in the garage. To, I've took torches and bent wrenches and did this that, to, to do what I needed to do, you know, stuff mm -hmm. that wasn't, that you couldn't go buy. You have to make it. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. So that's why I also think that we have such good musicians around this area because this is a rough area to grow up in. And it, whenever you got them hard times, it makes you a better person, I think, depending on how you go about it. That's like, well, we don't have access to a lot of things <clears throat> like in the bigger cities. So we got to work with what we got. That's like me. I have just built my pedal board the other day. I, I mean, you can order them online. They're easy to get. But I was like, I just want to yeah. build one. So I built mine out, out of wood and stuff. Made me yeah. a real slick-looking pedal board. Well it's, and, well, it's the same thing with, like, uh, Cubans whenever it comes to baseball or uh, Filipinos whenever it comes to pool. See, like, like in Cuba, they don't have baseball bats and baseballs. They have to work with whatever ball they can find in mm -hmm. a stick, you know. In uh the Philippines, the pool the pool halls that they have over there are they're crap. You know, I mean it's not very good at all. So whenever they're brought over here to the United States and they have actual nice pool tables and stuff, they're on top they're on top of everybody oh, else. Yeah. Because they've had to work through the worst circumstances so that whenever you're actually on a good playing field you're better oh, than yeah. everybody else. Oh, You've yeah. already been through the worst. Yep. It, right. it's, it's like being an elephant. It's like being the elephant in the room, you know. It, it's So the people that are going through rough times out there appreciate it, you know. Oh, yeah. I've it had it to makes play, you tougher. I've had to play with some of the worst PAs and some of the worst amps ever. And now, as everything progressed, I've got some really slick gear. And it makes you feel good too. It's like you appreciate it more. Huh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. my God. It's like oh. And then like, I can't remember where we were playing at recently. They were like, well, they had an in-house PA, and they were like, you know, I remember a lot of people don't like it and this, that, there, and the other. And I was like, dude, I was like, you have no idea what I've had to sing through. <laughs> I said this is fabulous compared to what I've had to use. Before it will be perfectly fine. Trust yeah. me. You get some good stories out of those crazy times too. There's a little hole in the wall places. I'm, oh man. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I could talk for weeks on some of the stuff that I've seen and went through. But man, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap this up. But dude, it has been fun, man. It's good to see you, brother. And I'm glad that stuff is finally starting to happen again for you, man. It seems like every time that I get on Facebook, you've always got something going on somewhere. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so what do you have going on right now? Uh, i got a show in Richmond tomorrow at Bluegrass Barrel House. Um, got a bunch of shows lined up, and I can't mention all of them. And I can't remember all of them. They're all on the calendar. Yeah. But then I've got the, the single I'm recording, like I was mentioning earlier. I'm using uh, – I got hooked up with Bo Garrett. He's been the lead guitar player for Montgomery Gentry for 20-some years. Yeah, dude's a beast. He's going to play on my single and my album. He's going to oh, help cool. me arrange it and produce it and all that. Um, been – 
talking some with uh, Beverly Gosden, which is Vern Gosden's widow. She's got a couple studios. I've been working with her on some stuff. I just got a whole bunch of stuff coming That's up, good, man. man. That's um, good, man. That's good. And it's good, you know, after last year, man, you deserve all this. That's good, brother. Everybody does because everybody, all these musicians, it's hard on them, man. I mean, <clears throat> especially if you use, if it's what you do for a living, like I yeah. do. When you can't play, it's like, whew, bank gets pretty thin. Yeah. So, but uh, the Lord blessed and kept me going, and now it's getting growing even more. I mean, we've got a lot of. Yeah. See, I think it's gonna it's gonna be more busy than it's ever been because people have just been wanting it so bad that they'll just take what they can get right oh, now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. if there's a local show going on, they're ready for it. They just they want to. They cabin want that fever, sense man. of normalcy, man. Yeah, and, and sh- it, that's a thing too, cabin fever. Yeah. So yeah, I think that live entertainment is going to be booming this year. Hopefully. Oh Hopefully yeah, it's, uh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I hope for like for your, you know, for your stand up. Yeah. Well, we we're, bro- we're back doing shows, man. It's it's a great feeling right now. Yeah, yeah because everybody has suffered, man, so hard. It's really hard to not be able to go out and do what you want to do but 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 it also brings us together and it shows everybody that despite any difference that you have race religion background whatever that we can all still get together as one for the same thing that and it shows us that we're not so different last year was so dividing and and, and we need whenever entertainment brings people together it's a beautiful thing and I think that that's going to help us out just as people a I lot. I think so. So, yeah, man, it's exciting. I think so. I mean, it it has to. Yeah. <laughs> it has to. <laughs> well, we're already almost halfway through 2021. So, and I think that after last year, every year is just going to fly by after this. That's what makes sense to me. I felt like the longest year I've ever lived. And now, we're, like I said, we're already almost in May. I mean, right. this weekend is going to be the first of the month. So people go to Walmart now. Like, yeah, don't go this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be a disaster. But, Larry, thanks again, brother. All right, brother. Boom.